Hello and welcome to the first in a series of videos on how to tune and use a Nodis ignition controller. We're going to be covering the installation of the Bluetooth module, the installation of the software and some basic tuning features here on the bench with a Nodis ignition controller. OK, so the first step is to install the Bluetooth USB dongle that we supply. Now, some laptops do have Bluetooth built into them, and they will already have a Bluetooth icon down here in the taskbar. However, if you don't have one, um, and it's not in your control panel, then of course you will need to install the USB Bluetooth serial adapter that we supply. So just plug it into an available port, and Microsoft should make lots of funny noises, and then you should see the Bluetooth device icon appear in the lower right hand corner. OK, so the first step is to ensure that your node is powered up on the vehicle and you're within about 5 meters range of it with your laptop. So with the, blue, with the node is powered up, the red LED should be on on the nodes. The engine can be running on the nodes as well. It doesn't matter what stage the nodes is in when you connect to it as long as it is powered. One thing you'll need to note is on the bottom of your nodes unit is a serial number, a four digit number. Ours, for example, is 4023. So what we're going to do is we're going to add the, the, blue, the Bluetooth nodes to the computer so the computer can communicate with it. So first things first, we double click on our Bluetooth devices icon. And as you can see, there are no devices shown because we haven't yet paired with the with the with the with the, the node system. So we're going to click Add Device, and what it's going to do is it's going to try and find the node is. Now, what usually happens is it comes up as Other, and then after a few moments, it changes to say Node is. Do not try and connect to it until it's changed to Node is. Once it has done, simply click on it and then hit Next. And here you get a choice to enter a pairing code. We're going to choose enter the device's pairing code and we're going to type in that serial number. Remember on this unit it was 4023, but on your nodes the number may be different. It could start with a 3000, 5000, it could be 7900, but it would always be a four digit number. So enter it in there, then hit next. And you'll see here that it will pair up with it. And down here, if you notice, it said COM3 very quickly. We'll show you how to check that in a moment. After a while, it should say it successfully added to this computer. Hit close, and that's it. You'll now see node is listed in your device window here. And if we double click on it, and then go to services, give it a couple of seconds to sort itself out, we'll see that it has created a serial port on COM3. So this we need to make a note of. COM3 is the communications port that the node will be using to talk to it. Hit OK, and close this window down. OK, so we now have the system paired with the Nodis. What we're going to do is, if you haven't already installed EasyTune, is feel free to download it from nodis.co.uk. Under the download section, there will always be the latest version of the software there, as well as the most up-to-date user manual. Once you've downloaded and installed the application, you'll see an icon on your desktop called Nodis EasyTune, or it may be in your start menu down here. But either way, double-click on the icon and you'll be presented with the node is easy tune this is version 0.87 and as you can see we're currently not connected uh, so we're not expecting anything to see here but uh, what we'll do now is we will go to file we will first of all choose the COM port now don't just hit connect you need to choose the COM port first as we saw earlier COM3 was the name of the COM port the node is when you make the Bluetooth connection will generally add COM3, COM4, COM5, COM6 it's usually the lower one of the two so if you're not too sure just use the lower one this one an example is COM3, click COM3 and then hit connect. After a brief moment of time you'll see reading map down here and then it will download the entire map to the PC so you can see exactly what we've got on here. Now for demonstration purposes I have the nodes here on a bench plugged into an RPM signal generator so I can vary the RPM and also the throttle load up and down quite easily. It makes it a lot easier for demonstration purposes but in real cases it will be on the vehicle and so as long as you're within the driver's seat or within 5 to 10 meters you should have no problems at all with connecting. As you can see here this is the standard base map. There's a few things to check and a few things that are straight away obvious. Down here you have RX and TX. These are the communications between the nodes and the PC or the laptop. If this stops flashing, you've lost connectivity. So you will need to reconnect using the file menu. Here on the right you can see some gauges. They are reporting the engine speed in RPM, the engine load, which relates to the left-hand axis of the ignition map, and the current advance angle that the engine is trying to run, or the commanded advance angle being 10 degrees. 
it's very important to note this is a commanded angle. If your timing wheel or trigger wheel is, is not correctly aligned, it won't fire at 10 degrees because of the angular difference of your trigger wheel. This is the commanded angle, which is looked up from this map here. Okay, so first things first, let's have a look through the software. As you can see, in front of us we have the 16x16 16 16 ignition table. Along the top here is the RPM, which relates to the columns. And down the left hand side here is load, which is currently indicated to be using TPS, or throttle position for load, and it goes from 0 to 100%. So as RPM increases, it moves up and down this way, and as load increases or decreases, it moves up and down this way, to give you a full three-dimensional map. If we look at the map in a three-dimensional view by clicking the 3D view tab, we can see the 3D shape of the curve. Now this is the base map, so it's very simple, a very safe map, not too much advance and quite a steady rate of rise to around 39 degrees. We can click and drag to rotate and view this map from different angles, which makes it very easy when doing final tuning to make sure you don't have any hills or spikes in your map that could cause misfires or stuttering or any unwanted behavior from the engine. The next thing we're going to look at is the load mode. Now the load mode determines what the Node's ECU uses to determine how to read this map in terms of using this left hand axis. And currently as you can see it's set to throttle position. Now we have a choice of options here for changing different modes depending on how you've configured your node is. Many of you may want to run the node is without any load compensation using purely speed or engine speed to determine how much advance you run, a bit like a typical distributor. For that you would use the 2D or off mode. And what this would do is always follow the 0% curve. It would always run along this curve. None of this map is used. It negates the use of the 3D mapping, however it does mean you'll get your engine up and running quite simply. And in most cases 2D is enough. Whenever you change a mode, you'll see that the box turns red to indicate that it's changed from its default status. You'll need to then click Change Load Mode, and after a brief moment, comms will regain and it will let you know that load is set at 0% in 2D mode. So as you can see, load is now set at 0%, and load up here is also left blank, and we will only use this line here. The next mode is Throttle Position. We press Throttle Position and then hit change load mode, it goes to the default TPS mode and it's currently telling us that the throttle is not calibrated and that's because we haven't yet calibrated it using the buttons on the nodes, which we'll go through in another video. We can also use on the earlier nodes, which had the 21 PSI input map sensor this option. Unfortunately the nodes Rev2 doesn't use the internal map sensor anymore so we've given the option to use the external 3 bar map sensor, the standard Cosworth Morelli item that we can recommend from our website. Also you can use the generic map sensor which will relate the 0 to 255 value on the left hand axis to the value output by the map sensor. So you won't have a direct reading of manifold pressure, you will be able to go from the map sensor's lowest reading to the map sensor's maximum reading. But let's change this back to throttle position, as this is the most commonly used mode. The next thing to look at before running the engine is the limiters and the outputs. Here you can see the standard limiters have been set. We have a hard cut set at 7300 RPM. The hard cut will actually stop the ignition events from happening. It will literally miss ignition events. So if it's revving to 7300 it will start to miss ignition events to try and maintain 7300 RPM. The soft cut however backs the timing off by around 20 degrees in order to slow the engine's rate of climb. Launch RPM is the RPM at which the ECU will try and hold the engine at whenever the launch pin is pulled low, either via a clutch switch or a button on the dashboard. The shift light trigger RPM is the RPM at which point the shift light output on the ECU is pulled low. Here you can see it is set to 6500 RPM. Also on the ECU we have an array of auxiliary outputs. We can tie them to either use RPM, load, coolant or intake temperature and set their trigger point and hysteresis point or the time below which they will turn off here. The TACO can also be set to run at either half speed or full speed depending on what type of tachometer you are using in your car. 
In order to change any of these options, all you need to do is double click on the option and enter in a new value. You'll see the minimum required values in the range enabled in the box above. For example, we'll change this limiter to 7500. Press OK and you'll see that it's been updated to the ECU. Change it back again by double clicking, entering in a new number, 7300, and pressing OK. And again, you will see it has moved back to its original value. Finally, the Diagnostics tab is used to show diagnostics and will usually be a first port of call when having issues with setting up your loaders. It shows the dwell and the firing teeth related to the trigger ring of the coil A and coil B. It also indicates the triggering pattern that we are using, either 36 minus 1 by pressing this button, or if using a Vauxhall, Peugeot or other manufactured engine which uses a 60 minus 2 trigger, we can press this button here. Once pressed, you'll see that it changes the triggering mode to indicate that it's been successful and the teeth are updated to support the 60 minus 2 trigger. In this case, they will be using 36 minus 1. Sync loss indicates any synchronization or missed teeth events. This may show a number under 10 on, on normal running situations because of when the engine is first cranked. When it's, run, when it's running or if the engine runs badly, this number should not increment. If it does, you've likely got a wiring issue with your crank sensor. OK, so let's go ahead and look at how we map an engine on one of these Node's ignition controllers. So first of all, we look at the map in the two-dimensional view. And as you can see, the throttle position is shown from 0 to 100% and the RPM is shown from 800 RPM to 8000 RPM. The numbers in this section represent the ignition advance that the Node's ECU will be commanding the engine to run at. For example, at 5000 RPM and 40% load, it will be firing at 29 degrees of advance. Now what I have is the ECU here connected to a function generator and what I will do is I will increase and decrease the RPM so you will see the RPM gauge moving up and down respectively. And here we go with the RPM gauge moving up and down to show increasing and decreasing RPM. As you can see the advance is changing to read from the map. As I come up to around 4000 RPM the advance is also ramping up accordingly. I also have the option when tuning to click on follow ECU. This will allow the cursor to follow the position of the, of the ECU when mapping which makes it much easier in terms of tuning to see where the ECU is, is obtaining its, its advance angle from in the table. As you can see it moves up and down the RPM scale. Now when I'm on the rolling road or on the road tuning this, this car, I'll see here that I'm at 2500 RPM and I'm at 0% throttle. And what I want to do is increase or decrease this ignition advance angle. This is with the follow mode on, but I can turn it off and click wherever I like. But let's just put the follow mode back on to show the ease of tuning. So click follow. Then use the Q and W keys to increase or decrease the ignition advance. As you can see, the advance gauge in the lower right is going up and down to represent the changes that I'm making. I can tune any section of the map I wish and also tune multiple blocks of cells by selecting and then pressing increase or decrease respectively. Now any changes I make are in real time to the ECU, so expect a change immediately and a performance difference from the engine straight away. However, changes will be lost whenever I turn the ignition off if I do not first press burn map. This permanently saves the map to the ECU. A slight delay and the map is now burned to the engine management system and the burn map button is now turned off. If I make another change however, you will see that burn map lights and turns red to remind me to press burn map to save the changes to the controller. Another feature of the Node's EasyTune software is the ability to save maps for sharing among friends or on forums. Go to File, Save Map, choose a file name, hit Save, and the map is saved. When connecting, you can open a map 
and import it directly with this control button here. I hope that this video has been useful in explaining how to use the Nodis EasyTune software and for any other technical queries or questions please visit our forums at nodis.co.uk. Thanks.